Welcome to the Nate and Doran podcast. We are professional videographers based in Vancouver, Canada, and we are here to talk about relevant topics within the video and media industry. I'm Nate, and I'm Nate Dixon Media. And I'm Doran, the videographer, solo entrepreneur offering video production services. And uh, today we're going to talk about behind the scenes footage uh, for your personal brand, why it's important and uh, how to do it, how to get it. Uh, and I do want to make the distinction for your personal brand in the sense of you're, you're self-employed, your your own kind of business, your own uh, videography business, and you just want to get some behind the scenes of yourself doing uh, the services that you're doing. Because the other possibility is you might get hired as a videographer to film behind the scenes for a different purpose, and that might just nuance differently. Um, so I guess... Nate, the big question mm-hmm. is, why is behind-the-scenes footage important for us? Well, behind-the-scenes can do a lot of things, Doran. And as videographers, usually we're always behind the camera. We're, we're always focusing on someone else. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you can be doing all these jobs and you don't have time to like <laughs> take a picture of yourself or take a quick selfie when you're in the moment and focus on other things. Um, so it can be really valuable to get pictures and videos documenting what you do for a living. What do you, what happens actually on set or at location when you're doing your thing? So mm-hmm. it can show clients what it looks like to actually work with you. You know, it can show your professional interactions, um, your your professional setup, how much like all how your gear is set up. Because sometimes people have a hard time visualizing what all goes into a shoot Hmm. they just see the finished product they didn't realize oh well i actually had three light sources there and (laughs) diffusion and a microphone and tripods and cameras and (laughs) And that's why i ask you how big your office space is (laughs) yeah you you've been bit by that when the the space was a bit too small right yeah and you're trying to film on that 50 mil prime but uh, (laughs) you need a wide (laughs) angle for that space (laughs) <laughs> that's true yeah. i have had situations where i literally just pull up my phone and show them a behind the scenes pick like oh see th- this is the setup that we had for this other client do you want us to do something similar and i shot behind the scenes for you mm-hmm. and it actually <laughs> turned into a second shooting day because oh, yeah. we needed to to co- cover everything that we needed to get covered so you know, in a pinch, if it's another videographer there, then you might need an extra pair of hands to help you make things on time. Yeah, for sure. That worked out great. Uh, you had the gimbal uh, and the client had forgot to uh, specify that, oh, today we're filming a highlight video instead of just the usual teleprompter stuff like, oh, OK, good. Now, OK, I learned now. And uh, yeah, but they were easy going and willing to understand the situation. And okay, let's hire the second guy and did great. Um, and thank you very much for that behind the scenes footage. I have not yet had a chance. Right. That was my follow up. <laughs> <laughs> have you dragged it into your editing software yet? Well, that's the first thing I did when I went home. I, I wanted to see the slow mo and the, the potential there because I also wanted to give you feedback. You were also inquiring. Um, and now it's a bit dated um right because some mask wearing is no longer <laughs> happening now so <laughs> unless restrictions come back then I'll, I'll then i'm super motivated to like yeah let's get in and get me with the mask on and <laughs> yeah just one more piece of branding the doran you had your custom mask made I, I think even even if that never comes back for a couple of years people will be understanding of that they'll yeah, understand so. like oh yeah yeah i still remember <laughs> yeah um what's another reason why behind the scenes are important to you doran um well behind the scenes can be very useful like you, you already kind of covered it like showing a client your professional setup or um you i'll just expand on the other point you said to to show your professional interactions so on your website some people put like a banner video or a little explainer welcome to my website uh, what it's like to work with doran and you can have a nice narration and a quick little um explainer video explaining your services and you have the 
footage that matches it. So when you say you offer green screen services, having behind the scenes footage of you setting up a green screen, lighting it, uh, maybe cut to uh, transition to removing the green screen and showing the final product uh, quickly, uh, that can add a lot of value and establish professionalism really quickly in uh, anybody that's interested in your services. Um, it, it helps you br uh, build up your brand basically you know mm -hmm. you can put that on your website you can also put it on uh, social media show it to clients off your phone uh you know if they add or if they reply on an email uh, oh have you worked with doing this type of stuff oh yeah here's the final video and here's a little behind the scenes of how i operate and that might show that you uh, the client that you go that extra mile um to inform them of hey i'm the real deal Here's what you get working with me. It leaves all like it answers all the questions they might have in their mind, or it might reassure them of, you know, again, your professionalism. Actually, that kind of reminds me this uh, mechanic. I, I take our, our van to, I really appreciate what they do is they take a picture of everything they inspect and they send it to you in a detailed report. So if it's like fluid levels are okay, I see like a close-up picture with flash showing that thing or, you know, brake rotors are, you're, you're going to need to replace them soon. They're getting thin. It's like, it actually shows you a picture. And I'm like, I'm not going to crawl under there and like take pictures myself and check it. I don't know much about cars anyways, mm -hmm. but the fact that they're like documenting everything like that, I'm like, man, that, that builds trust. I might not know what I'm looking at specifically, mm -hmm. but the fact that they're like willing to go there and like have that photo that like paper trail, that photo trail of everything that they're doing. I'm like, oh, okay, these guys are legit. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, actually. Uh, let me know what that, where that mechanic's located at. Because that comes in really handy if they're like, oh, like uh, you you brought it in for an oil change and changing the brakes, but there's this issue also. And you're like, oh, okay, another issue. And then he shows <laughs> you the photo and you're like, yeah, that's cracked. That's not good. <laughs> I don't want to lose control in the, on the highway. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, same 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 kind of concept, same kind of uh, impression. Uh, it, it's it's always a positive thing. A client will only be impressed by you doing a little bit of effort and getting a behind the scenes, um, you know, photo or video, whatever mm -hmm. is kind of self explanatory by just looking at it. Mm -hmm, definitely. And uh, let's see. What else? Oh, one thing I've noticed uh, with when I'm browsing like Instagram, for example, I love seeing fellow videographers behind the scenes in like their their stories or like kind of what they're doing today. What are they working on? Um, because I, I always love seeing other people's setups, mm -hmm. how they rig their cameras, where they put their lights, the gear they use. And yeah, I'll, I'll either be like, oh, that's really cool. How are you finding that camera? Or sometimes they'll they'll show like a close up of their camera settings on their monitor and i'm like mm -hmm. oh why is your why is your iso so high or why are you shooting with that shutter speed and <laughs> one time i asked someone mm -hmm. i was like why why are you shooting such high iso and you know your shutter speed it's not like it doesn't make sense to me and they're like well i'm in australia so i'm shooting for pal so i'm shooting at 50 like oh, okay and then they're like and the way I forget which camera they had, it was some Sony camera, but the base ISO there was like different base ISOs, and they jumped mm -hmm. up to the second one, and they're like, it's actually less noisy at this higher ISO because that's like the next step where the ISO breaks and like it's cleaner. I'm like, oh yeah, that's really good. Thanks for explaining that to me. That's different than my camera. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I definitely know what you mean. Uh, so some of these higher end videographers have a community basically built. And they can uh, engage in like conversations uh, with other uh, you know, professionals or enthusiasts uh, plus the clients. So that's that's that would be like the next step after like populating your website and establishing your brand um, to like expand your influence as a content creator, as an artistic storyteller, whatever your niche mm -hmm. is. Um, I, I have not gotten there yet, but you know, that that's in the works. I got some well, behind the scenes from you, right? So <laughs> <laughs> you don't even need to like be be super high end about it. Like sometimes someone mm -hmm. might correct you and be like, Oh, maybe you should have put a sandbag on that C stand. 
you know, I've had it where it tips over and it almost hit a client or something. And you're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You don't need to like necessarily be like, look, I did everything right. But even yeah, to true. just open the conversation, right? Yeah. You can learn things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> just be aware the clients might be looking though. <laughs> so don't just post anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have a second, have a second thought about it before you post it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Look at these cables. I almost tripped over them five times today. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and sometimes um you can just like you're you're set up there and if you have like an extra GoPro lying around, for example, like sometimes I just put it on time lapse mode if what I'm doing is very like, oh, this is my full gear, three camera, five lights, whatever, green screen, and I just do a time lapse of me setting up. You know? So it's it's like using that time and just setting up one quick little extra camera just gets me more I, I can get more value for my time that day, you know? Mm. Speaking of more value um for your time that day, I mean behind the scenes in general is nice because you can double or triple the value and content that you can get out of that same project or shoot day. Mm -hmm. Right. So say if you're filming something, maybe two locations, if all you do is have that finished video product, it's great, but you kind of have to wait till it's all finished and edited. But if you're able to like post a few stories on social media, get people asking you questions, oh, how's that shoot going? What are you doing? It can show clients that you're you're busy, you're like desirable to be like, mm -hmm. you don't just have an empty schedule, you're showing people that you're busy. Mm -hmm. um, it sparks that conversation with other videographers and then afterwards if you have photos or video of yourself like you said you can create that into even more content mm -hmm. so it really just maximizes your time for sure and actually you saying that i just remembered something uh i forgot to jot down in the document here um clients i've had several clients use behind the scenes to hype up a project an upcoming video like you said, like until you wait for the finished video, sometimes it's depending how complex it is and how many moving parts it might be a week, it might be two months until the video comes out. Some you can offer your clients an extra incentive, um, and you can maybe bill for it uh, if you really sell it well to them. Hey, let's hype up the project by some behind the scenes, you know, like hey, day two of filming on set, um, with the CEO, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I know I had that for uh, for a uh, Christmas special. Uh, we pull, uh, filmed like a month in advance before Christmas, but they were like hyping up like, oh, we're going to have a special Christmas video coming out. So then it was just showing the guy like dressing up as Santa in front of the green screen and <laughs> mic him up. So um, that also helps your visibility online because then uh, the client tags you, you know, mm -hmm. like working with, this video production team or you know videographer um on a on our next big project so there's there, there's already like so many reasons why it could be important it's all about you tapping into that potential mm -hmm. have you uh, uh, be honest here have you ever used behind the scenes where you see yourself and kind of self-analyze yourself or is it just me <laughs> like oh man why did yeah. i put the camera there at that spot and i didn't notice that right behind is better or like oh somebody bumped the light and i didn't notice but i see it in the behind the scenes <laughs> yeah hindsight's 2020 you know <laughs> um the thing that i've noticed is sometimes when i'm focused on like if I'm like have one hand on the tripod and the other hand on the lens for like focusing or something, and I'm like staring intently, I realize how bad posture I have. <laughs> I'm like, you know, thrusting my my pelvis out, I'm like leaning back with my shoulders hunched, and I'm like in the moment I don't realize it, but in the behind the scenes I'm like, oh man, no wonder I had a sore lower back that whole day. <laughs> this is what clients see you doing. <laughs> I'm like, do I really look that goofy? <laughs> so I need to practice, you know. Yeah. Good posture, rolling my shoulders back. Yeah. So, yeah, it makes you more self-aware. Yeah, so, so you could use it even for personal re review. Like, okay, how long does it take me to set up? Well, how can I improve my setup time? Um, 
how can I better protect my equipment? You know, like you can just review mm-hmm. j- again, just do a time lapse of yourself setting up like with the GoPro wide angle. Um, heck, I've I've even used the behind the scenes at one point for bloopers. Because oh, yeah. a blooper happened after we stopped filming. Uh and but the client requested a blooper video at the end of the year. And so I went back through the footage and I also went through yeah. behind the scenes and I'm like Hey, I got some funny things that happened in between cuts and they were super excited about it. So yeah, just, you never know what extra value you could get. True that. So yeah, I, I feel like we gave lots of reasons why behind the scenes is important. I think if we think about it more, we'll find even more. But the second question is, how do you capture behind the scenes? I, I gave an example uh the simple way is if you have an extra like just put your phone on a little phone stand mini tripod or a gopro you know uh you can get a gopro for 100 bucks that just does a basic 1080 30 just to capture you uh mm-hmm. what what other ways of capturing behind the scenes can you think of nate well using your phone is a good one too you can kind of show yourself there I'm still not super great and comfortable at like talking to the camera myself and like, Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm here on this set and look at everybody and look at me. Like Mm -hmm. that's still a struggle for me. But when I watch that kind of content, I'm like, Oh, that's cool. I feel a part Mm -hmm. of their, this person's letting me into their day, but I still have a hard time doing it myself. So using your phone, cause you always have your phone on you. That's another great way to do it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I the the hard part for me is finding the moment to do it, because it's like mm-hmm. usually the clients the whole time with me during setup and we're chit chatting details or they're getting ready with their script or you know they're waiting to get mic'd up and test audio. Uh, yeah, I think I would be very awkward at that to be like, hey, I'm just gonna just gonna vlog for five minutes for <laughs> behind the scenes. But again, if you hype up the behind the scenes with them, hmm, maybe that's how. Uh, and obviously you had mentioned earlier, like the next level of getting a better quality than just your phone or just a GoPro in a corner is to hire another professional. Or as, as we did, we, we, uh, we did uh, service for service. Like, Hey, you film behind the scenes for me. I'll film for you, which by the way, I owe you. Yes. You still do owe me behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah. Good uh, reminder. For sure. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and maybe, maybe this is something that you can do as an upcoming videographer. You're just getting started. You're trying to maybe reach out and have connections. Hey, can I come shadow you uh, while you're doing a project? Can I be your second shooter? Or do you need behind the scenes? And that way we can chit chat. I can see your setup. I'll get some behind the scenes for you. Uh, And we'll, uh, you know, maybe that way you have a partnership form. Totally. That's actually how I got to hold that giant sneak last year i asked shy yeah. can i shoot behind the scenes for you mm-hmm. and so that was a great experience and got to <laughs> got to have a snake draped over my shoulders which for some people it's awesome some people are like why would you want to go there mm-hmm. but yeah that was a great experience yeah and it's a great end to show them your skill like if they're impressed with the behind the scenes they look good they got super value out of it they they might consider like hey yeah man i want you as a second shooter you're you're pretty good so I guess I guess then you would think of how like what would you focus on behind the scenes? So what what does behind the scenes mean? What are you capturing? Well, yeah, there's a few different mindsets you can have when you're doing that, you know. But um, I think in general for behind the scenes, a good thing to have in the back of your mind is um, you can be a bit more experimental with behind the scenes then obviously when you're shooting the main product for that usually you have to be a lot more direct and keep the image clean and stuff but for behind the scenes you can get a little bit more artistic you can try some some more unique filming methods or if you're taking photos some different angles and exposure ways to expose the image so why don't we run over like a quick list of things we can think of doran to make behind the scenes a little more interesting than say just the gopro in the corner capturing everything Right. Those are just like documenting like a setup or a set design or something. The more artistic stuff, like let's say if you wanted to make a highlight video for that, the event, like let's say you're filming 
Nate Dixon. I'm I'm th- going to come to film behind the scenes for you. Obviously, you're my main focus, but I have to weave in what you're interacting with, who you're interacting with, or what you're accomplishing. So if if you're working on your lens, for example, I might have a close-up of your hand work in the lens and then pull focus to you. You know, like do a foreground element uh, transition uh, to a background focus. Um, that would mean me being like on a zoom lens or being up close um, with a prime lens. Um, or I could do, you know, if you're interacting with a client, I could be filming from over their shoulder. So you can see the client's point of view, for example. And uh, uh, that way you can easily use that footage because you're not revealing their face. You don't need a cons- uh, um, a release form. <laughs> release form. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we see like Nate in action, you know. So those, Definitely. those are like the first first two things I, I would think of. And another thing you can do, like if there's in between takes or something, make sure you tell the videographer no. But then like you can sneak in where the camera can see you when it's like between takes or something. That's a perfect time to get that over the shoulder shot mm-hmm. is maybe you're right near the green screen, for example, going over the talent's shoulder shots that you couldn't get when it's actually rolling Mm -hmm. but in between takes you can just like sneak in there Mm -hmm. and get some angles that you you can't get when it's filming or any other time yeah and you have to be a bit strategic so um like uh, we this is already like at that point where it's it's almost you you have a goal in mind so for example when you shot behind the scenes for me you were clearly waiting for me to do something interesting. You weren't just filming nonstop, uh, pointlessly while I'm listening to the client and the talk, client's just talking. You you were waiting mm-hmm. for me to, okay, he's putting his headphones on, he's switching something on the camera. That's when you got the shot. You were super efficient. You knew like, okay, well, he's got to do this. I'm waiting for this. And while you're waiting for that, you're already like picturing like, okay, what do I do a low angle? Do I do a reveal shot from behind the wall? Do I do um, from behind another piece of equipment? Showing him operate mm-hmm. that equipment. Do I do a close up? Uh, and the answer is do all of them if you have time. Because you definitely you might end up using all of them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, another fun thing you can do is get some silhouette shots. If you're shooting near a window or outside, a really nice artistic thing is to mm-hmm. stop down, get nice silhouette shots because those are great, especially for a website. You know, it's it's more artistic. Mm-hmm. You can get strong like blue sky colors or if there's a really strong light source, mm-hmm. you can expose for that. And that can get some more interesting, unique shots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. That reminds me of uh, actually another shot that I like to do a lot for B-roll uh, and behind the scenes sometimes too, is if um, if there's like a light source, I'll position myself be, uh, to have the talent or the subject, whatever I'm focusing, filming on, between me and the light source and their, their head's kind of like obstructing and revealing depending on how they're like leaning forward or back. Um, and there's always that like sunburst kind of like lens flare that just whoops hit the mic <laughs> that just happens and that's always an artistic uh, go-to uh, that it can easily be used as a transition point so if you want to do a lens flare transition it's more organic and looks more natural because the thing you're transitioning to is a bright light source yeah yeah right when it's like oof yeah that's perfect that's a good one Um, Another fun thing to look for is reflections. If there's any sort of plexiglass up, especially during COVID shoots, there's more plexiglass everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Reflective services like tables or mirrors, that's another fun thing that I try and do when I'm shooting behind the scenes is get reflections, try and incorporate the environment more if you can, Mm -hmm. than just like straight vanilla close-ups of whatever the talent is or you. You want to try and get more like dirty shots so to speak mm-hmm. oh yeah outdoors as well plenty of reflective opportunities sometimes with water or yeah shoot, shooting or something. through chain like fences or through tripod legs to try and like mm-hmm. i think there's a lot of fun angles you can get 
Yeah, I remember for for the documentary we, we both worked on, I remember that shot of like we had made it look like it rained so the ground was like reflective because it was like wet. Uh and we had the uh, like the cop lights, the siren lights, you know, the uh yeah, reflecting the red and blue. Yeah. Yeah. That was a cool shot I still remember you did. Yeah, and we shot what didn't we shoot like a wall with the cop lights coming through the window with the blinds and like oh, the yeah. raindrops dripping down the window and you could see the the shadow of the person's head that walked past the window yeah and and because and the like lights that. are slightly different distances the shadow was like also moving in in like a skip frame fashion yeah that was nate that was a great shot f <laughs> <Death> kiss <laughs> director nate um yeah and and uh, I, I think one thing that um is obviously used quite a bit sometimes is slow motion. You can mm -hmm. get some slow motion shots depending on, again, you think about it. If you have the luxury of time and you know specifically what's happening on set or on location, if you know like, Oh, they're going to do, they're going to enact like someone like struggling and fighting with someone else, or, you know, you can, or if you know the camera operator is like on a on a gimbal and he's about to run and follow somebody, you know, you can, as a behind the scenes opportunity, you can film that in slow motion because either what you're filming is very dynamic and might look good in slow-mo. Um, or if you are doing behind the scenes and on a gimbal and you're following someone or following, like you're doing a transition, you know. Uh, or a walk around around something, uh, a slow motion or a ramp up speed in post editing might be something that you can think about. Like, okay, I'm going to film this with this intent. So mm -hmm. there's, again, like you said, experimental, artistic, um, slow motion is another tool, you know, 60 frames a second, 120, whatever you're capable of. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, if like there's, if you're slating shots, that's a great slow motion with the loud. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, man, just talking about behind the scenes gets me so excited to like focus and film more and use more. Definitely. I got to think of what project I want to use your behind the scenes shoot day that you owe me. I got to think. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, some something that's not in the next two months, because <laughs> I'm yeah busy busy with, busy with dance. dance comps. But I definitely do want to, uh, um, you know, get even on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything else you can think of for behind the scenes, Dorian? I feel like we covered kind of most of our points. Yeah. Yeah. I think anything else I can think of right now would get really nitty picky and very situational, very. Uh, too specific i think the gist is pretty well spoken uh and given so um maybe just as a quick recap behind the scenes is important you can show it to your clients you can put it on your website to establish uh, your professionalism and uh your work ethic um you can use it to build a uh, community and spark conversation with other professionals um, you can pitch it to your client as a hype mechanism. Hey, let's throw your viewership, your target audience, some, um, behind the scenes hype. Mm -hmm. And then when you're capturing behind the scenes, just feel free to get more artistic, use lights and reflections in the environment, shoot slow-mo if you can. And, uh, yeah, that pretty much covers it, doesn't it? Yeah. It's that simple. It's, it's, yeah, just it's a no brainer. Yeah. Try and plan it if you can. And basically there's no, oh, you you did it wrong. There is no shot list unless your client specifically asked you to behind the scenes, a specific thing. So it's, it's like so relieving to know that, yeah, anything could potentially be something like awesome looking. So just experiment with it. So I hope you've mm -hmm. been inspired listening to us today to, uh, Give behind the scenes more uh, room in your business, in your brand. Um, 
And obviously this is something that you can just slowly build up and uh, you can keep it private until you're happy with what you've achieved with behind the scenes and see value in it. It's, it can be a very fun learning process that definitely has only positives in trying to uh, accomplish it. So um, yeah, I think that's a wrap for today's podcast. Hope we've inspired you. Thank you for watching and listening. And be sure to subscribe to not miss an episode of the Nate and Doran podcast. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever you use to listen to podcasts. This has been Nate and Doran. Thank you for watching and listening.